Here he is from the Frankly Speaking podcast and Daily Faceoff, NHL Insider, Friday Regular, Mr. Frank Saravalli. How are you? I'm good. I, I didn't know the winter tires thing was a thing until I went to Whistler for the first time. Do they actually still like stop you in check as you're going? I mean, periodically, mm -hmm. whenever they feel like they want but to. But here's the thing, Frank. It's going to snow like two to three times over a Vancouver winter. So people try and get away with not having all seasons or winter tires. And that's when chaos ensues on vancouver roads yeah you can have four by four but if you don't have winter tires good exactly luck. it's not about the going it's about the stopping <laughs> yeah. that's that's it exactly yeah. yeah uh frank first things first jim rutherford talking to the athletics says they need a top six forward you'd argue otherwise what says you well first off they kind of have a top six forward that's been languishing this year. So that's one part of it. It'd be really nice if you had an internal solution who, by the way, makes five and a half million bucks a year. The second thing is, look, I, I don't think scoring goals is what's going to, or offense is what could ultimately be the Canucks demise. I personally look at this group and, and I've, I've talked all along this season about how changing their defense core yeah, the structure has been great. The stars have been unreal. Demko has been amazing. But it's the biggest change for me year over year is the Canucks defense core changes. And when you have had to dip into at varying points this year for limited amounts of time, you know, the sort of fringe NHL depth pool that the Canucks have on the blue line, that to me is is where I'd try and I'd try and get one more really solid defender to add to this group. And it doesn't need to be a, a super expensive price point to get there, but someone who's also an insurance policy. And to, I'm going to go a step further, and I'm going to say, to answer your poll question today, which you didn't ask me, not no, yet. The, not yet. The Canucks should not go all in. Yeah. Because? G because... They're just cracking open the window. You want as many kicks at the can at this as possible. And at some point, you're going to want, with all the high-priced contracts that you have, if you're sitting in Patrick Alvin's office with the big board and you're projecting it out three, four years from now and you're paying Pedersen a ton and, and Quinn Hughes and all these guys, you're going to need guys on ELCs. Do not cut the legs off of future years as attractive and as exciting as this might be. You've got the chance to emerge here as the team to beat over the next few years, given where your core is. Don't, don't hinder yourself to just take one run this year in which it, it, it's a meat grinder. You could get through and win a round this year. You could win two. You could win three. Are you going to win the Stanley Cup? Probably not. And in that case, you might you might as easily lose in the first round. A hundred percent. The devil's advocate, uh, you know, argument against that. JT Miller's thirty. Uh, he's not getting younger. Um, so no one is, by the way. No, well, no. Pe Pedersen and Ronick are going to be more expensive. The OEL buyout costs you more next year, and then plus you have all these UFAs to be who have turned out to be pretty important parts of the club. They're all asking for raises going into next year, so this they may year. or may not be back. So it'll be a different looking team, regardless. So I understand that, and I, for the longest time covering this sport, I've always sort of been of the thought process of, look at these picks. They're more or less uh, lottery tickets is what they are. Because mm -hmm. half the time, once you get past 14 in the draft, you don't, even, you don't know what you're getting anyway. And so I've subscribed to that theory until I listened to Tom Dundon kind of sell me from the Carolina Hurricanes – and, and they've been masterful at trying to find market inefficiencies. And do they have a Stanley Cup to show for it? No. But his thought process is he thinks that the Stanley Cup playoffs are four rounds of seven coin flips per round. Mm -hmm. And that so much of it is luck-based, whether you break through or not, that the idea is to have 15 years worth of flipping coins so that at one point during that run, you break through. And that's how I now look at it. I've been sold. I've been swayed. So when you talk about a defender, are you talking about somebody at the Chris Tanef, Sean Walker level, or are we talking about like a Nick Sealer and Ilya Labushkin? 
any one of those guys that you just said, take them and hook them right into my veins for the Canucks. <laughs> like I love Nick Sealer. I don't know how much he's going to cost you. Like I would personally drive from the lower mainland to Philly and back to bring Nick Sealer there. If right, I were really the Canucks. more, so, more so than Walker, Nikki, Nikki nails, Nick, the nail gun sealer. He first off, he is, is low cap hit. I don't think he's, you know, you're probably looking at um, on the high end, the high, high end, a second round pick. And he's, he just does everything well. Like he's not excellent in any one area of the game and he's not, he's not bad at anything. And that part I think is, is a really attractive guys love him. It's a really attractive piece to have in your lineup. Now you're never, you're Nick never feeler. Hook him into his veins, says no one ever other than Frank Sarah. You're never fully healthy. Is he in there? But let's say they're, they're like like they are now. They're fully healthy. Is he in the top six yes. in favor of somebody else? Who's who are you taking out of that top six? Uh, you're going to put me on the spot, aren't you? Zadorov, Susie, Cole, Myers are your options. Hmm. Because you have to be better, right? That's the thing. It's got to be Cole then, right? Like, Spell Probably, off but I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'd be flirting with Zadaroff. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we've heard you on all in. What do you think they're thinking, Frank? Do you think Wheelander, Lekramaki, their first round pick, all their plum future assets are in play here? If, if Lekramaki is in play, then you guys are in a whole world of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and and here here's why I have a hard time answering this question. I don't you can think one thing, I can think one thing, Patrick Alvine can think one thing and Jim Rutherford can think another. That doesn't mean anything unless you find out what Frank thinks. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Francesco, the other Frank. Mm. The 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 big boy Frank. That's the only one that matters because that's how this franchise has operated for the last however many years. So really, what is he thinking and how aggressive this team should be? Because that's ultimately what's going to happen. One billionaire's whims and how he wakes up in the morning oftentimes governs the machinations of the Vancouver there are, there are, Sports Center. There thing. are other prospects, too, that like Hunter Brustevich, like USA Hockey, didn't even think to bring him into the World Juniors. I mean... You know, some people think that what he's doing this year in, in the OH, in the OHL is is smoke and mirrors to some degree. I mean, those kind of guys maybe uh, disposable. I don't have real line of sight on him, so I can't. I also can't answer that question. I'd say once you get past your real grade A's, that that you know, if you're talking about B and C level prospects, like I, I would make the move. Mm -hmm. And uh, and again, I, I, first round pick one way or the other, like. Is it is it absolutely life or soul crushing for the 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 Canucks to trade that? It's not. I, I would just advocate for as tough as the seven teams are that are in the playoffs in the West, and I'm including Edmonton in that group. I'm telling you, I it's a real accomplishment to win around this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's going to be four, three or four really disappointed franchises, no matter where it is, what division that are going to be feeling like they, they really missed out. So we know what you would do, but Rutherford specified top six forward. They have put lotto line back together with incredible results. I'm sure you've seen here over the last four or five games. Um, so then the big question we're debating here is center or winger because prior to lotto line, it was a winger for Pedersen. And as you noted, that could be solved if Kuzmenko, would actually play to his level of last and year. And maybe he would if they got a real center. Uh, and of course, second line <laughs> center is a little bit more difficult to acquire, but what do you think? What do you think they'd be more interested in at this stage of the game? I mean, it feels like center to me, but you know, I, I think if, if that, if, if the way things are currently structured right now, um, as much as I enjoy watching him play, Pew Suter is not your, to see going into a Stanley cup playoff run mm -hmm. as a contender. Right. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yep. I, I, I do really like watching him play and I think he could be just as effective as a winger. Uh, if you do get another center uh, and then insurance down the middle, but yeah, I hear what you're saying. Well, that line is lost right now 
with uh, Mikheyev and Kuzmenko. They've been put together, and that's the line that is struggling. Not a lot of personality. While we're watching a lot of line basically be a one-man band there. They're still getting good play out of Bluger, Garland, and Joshua. But again, is that a le- legit second line in a Stanley Cup playoff series in this tough Frank, have you seen like your Sean Monaghan? What, 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 what are you seeing there from him if he's available? Yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be a really interesting piece. Like, I he's number two on my trade targets board because, you know, the fact that he's been healthy and has continued to remain that way, he's on track for just over 50 points or right in that neighborhood. And look, he's really conscientious. He's not the player that he was a few years ago in Calgary when he was sort of a routine, you know, book him every year for 30 goals and 30 assists. That's not happening, but you're also... Like, I I don't think you're talking first round pick for Sean Monahan. So for me, unless there's a real bidding war, which there might be given the teams that are looking to add at that position, like I think in a perfect ideal world on a real true cup contending roster, he's your three C. But given where the Canucks are at now, like I could see him being an authentic option. And and helping out the PK perhaps and doing all that sort of stuff as well. You know, he's useful in other, in other ways beyond just, uh, being an offensive if, center if he's healthy if he's healthy right what are the who are the other centermen in play frank like uh, who else could uh, be or at least masquerade as a second line center who's available yeah i think uh that's where if that's truly what the canucks are looking for is a decent place to be like adam henrique is one of those guys um so you know pretty decently productive not entirely fast uh, and and really has lost a couple steps, I think. But in talking to people that have watched him really closely, they're like, this guy's hockey IQ is so off the charts. Like he'd be a great fit for someone um, and can impact you in other ways. And I think he's one of those guys like unquestionable work ethic, a drive that makes him really competitive that, you know, I'd, I'd certainly look to, to have him be one of those guys that pops in. Um, I mean, you've got at the upper echelon, the upper end of that, you know, Lindholm, of course. And and some would say, you know, where does he fit in the scale? I'd say he's not a number one, but on a, again, on a true cup contender, top flight to see. And another guy that I'd look at that I don't think he kind of fits the Canucks just based on the term that he has left, but depending on what the dollars look like, Kevin Hayes at, if the blues are going to retain half and knock him down to one seven, five, 20 goals, 45 points plays on your penalty kill. He's one of those guys that to the eye test, you you look at him because he's a bit bigger and a little bit more of an upright skater that you're like, Oh, this guy doesn't work hard. That's like, it drove people crazy. I, I love Kevin Hayes and I think he'd be a really good fit on a cup contender. I don't think Trevor Zegers is a talk kind of guy, but what's the cost going to be like for, for Zegers? Yeah, I, I don't – honestly, I don't even know that he's a guy that would move at the deadline. Like yeah. I, if you're the Ducks like, – and let's say you are – like, and I do believe that they are entertaining or would entertain the conversation for Zegers, this you know latest injury and the time that he's going to miss notwithstanding. Um, you know, I, I think you entertain that at the draft. Like why would you cut off – half the league's teams uh to you know put them up for auction now because building really teams would, would be interested in that too is that what you're anyone saying? would be yeah. interested i would think if yeah. you if you think that you can drag another dimension out of his game and make him a more complete player and you have faith in the creativity and offense that he has why would you cut off half the market well especially since he's hurt now yeah. and uh may six, not even be six health- weeks or eight yeah. weeks like may not even be healthy at trade deadlines so kind of it mostly i takes hear you there as well and that of course he gets injured the night that yeah I put the trade targets out. What a uh, <laughs> what a horrible day for him. Huh? But he gets traded. He gets hurt. He hears his name in tra- trade rumors. Uh, Hayes incidentally six five two sixteen. But here's the big question about him, Frank. Did he convince Cutter Goche not to sign with the Flyers no. there? <laughs> that that really you know, and not to go on a torch like Rand. I mean, it it was really disappointing to see all of that play out. And I understand really how it happened. I actually had the reporter, Anthony Sanfilippo on my show yesterday to add some context and explain, like he had people in the flyers organization, no doubt telling him, you know, drawing the line and he kind of connected the dot publicly. Um, I just like, I know Kevin Hayes pretty well. That's, that's not in his nature. It's not in his personality. 
And the stuff that he received on the back end of that, yeah. you know, I hope your brother, you know, I'm glad your brother's dead. Like, come on. What are we doing oh, here? No, uh, ridiculous. Um, is it just as simple as it didn't work out between Hayes and Torts and Cutter Goche took that as a red flag? I No, I don't even really think, like, uh, if there's a list of reasons, like, uh, it, it might be on there somewhere, but I don't think it's near the top. I The best I can glean is that part of this all started when last year he wanted to leave Boston College and the Flyers were in the middle of a mess. They had an interim GM they had a, a group and chemistry that they didn't like, obviously, by the pieces that they cast off last summer. The team was sliding in the standings and going nowhere, and he's coming to them saying, hey, I want to play in the NHL this season. They're like, we we know you're good enough to, but for the last three weeks of the year, why would we burn the first year of your entry-level contract doing it this way? Would you mind going to the AHL? And I think that's where it began to fall apart. Mm. Lastly, for me, Frank, because I, I saw your post on this. Is Landis Gog going to return in time for the playoffs? Like, whoa, oh, suddenly he's healthy and he drops into the Colorado Avalanche lineup. Yeah. Is, is this Kucherov like, or yeah, is this Aaron exactly. Rodgers? No, which, this which is, one is it? That's, that's, yeah, that's bullshit. Um, I saw all the people posting about that yesterday and I could see, like, if, you know, he had surgery in September and you, you game the system and, you you know, you sit out for the year and then come back at the most convenient time possible because that's what Kucherov was. And the best part of that as they went through that weird, awkward COVID period is he finished playing that season in September when the cup was awarded and waited all the way until Christmas to have surgery. Like that was the bullshit part of the Kucherov thing. Mm hmm. And they should have absolutely been slapped for that. This is the second full season that Landis Cog has missed. Like it's not a oh, like an oh man, hey they've they've timed this out. He had surgery last May, and they told them twelve to sixteen months. An unprecedented surgery, by the way. No NHL player has ever played with knee cartilage replacement, which is is kind of wild to think about. But they're a long way off from making that happen. And if he does. It will be more than two full calendar years since he played. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not buying the cap machination theory. And you're right. He's uh, had injuries in his past. Yeah. He's not going to be flippant about time missed. Uh, I wouldn't. All right. Yeah. Enjoy the uh, football game uh, Monday night. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe one. I won't. Uh, they, yeah. they did. The Eagles did put out a hype video today that I was like, ah, you're sucking me back in. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Thanks, Frank. This Sakaris and Price clip brought to you by Applewood Auto Group. And remember, it's all good at Applewood.